We've been doing a lot of testing lately with the uh, Pinoe uh, metabolic analyzer. And it's a portable device that actually measures what's going on metabolically. And they do this by respiratory exchange. And that is each breath in, each breath out, um, every single breath. And we've, I, I've, you know, we, we've done for a long time, we've understood some things that we're now able to kind of quantify. And one of those important things that we're actually quantifying is what happens from a good position to a bad position. And what, what are the repercussions of these things? And unfortunately, they have huge metabolic costs and we're starting to really see that. And so one of the things we were doing the other day, well, one, one of the things that we really wanted to look at were simple positions, right? So whether I was holding in the top of a plank, you know, arms out in front of me on the floor, hanging from a bar, bar overhead, just standing there. When I lack range of motion in some, in my, in these big um, joint complexes, so my, my rotators, right? Like my shoulders and my hips, I compensate, I have to compensate in order to keep my spine in a good position, right? And so when that spine gets compromised, my diaphragm gets compromised. And because my diaphragm gets compromised, my breathing gets compromised. Or what I do, because we're such, we're so good at actually adapting to things, is I compensate and make it easier for myself. So if I'm in a plank, and my back goes, my elbows swing out, and I'm still trying to hold, the easy thing for me to do is, and I don't even notice, right? Unfortunately, the energy notices, and, and that's where the cost comes, because the more cost I have on burning excessive carbohydrate. There's nothing wrong with using carbohydrate as energy. In fact, it's a part of aerobic metabolism as glucose is, is oxidized, right? So, um, but the more we start to dip into those anaerobic processes, we're starting to dip and the more we're, we're taking from carbohydrate, we have to pull from things that are called reserves, right? And so this is when we start to get into things like checks and balances, or let's say like, revenue coming in, but I'm spending as much on bills and stuff, it's just as much as is coming in. And it doesn't matter if you're a billion dollar company or you're a mom and pop or a small business. The fact of the matter is, is you're not profitable. And that is what this leads to in terms of our own, if, our own physiology and the cost of this. And it affects our tissue. It affects our endocrine system, it affects our cognition, our brains. Um, so all of these things in conjunction get, get, uh, they, they get affected by the result of poor movement patterns. And so this is why we've really stuck to the whole thing of skill development and understanding that because that is at the heart of what we should be laying on the foundational level of any program you're doing. And these are part of the principles of those things. And when we skip these things or blow through these things, although we may feel like we're getting better and we're getting more reps or we're, we're achieving longer distances or faster times, the cost in that in the long run far outweighs that. And I could show you a lot of athletes who are suffering as a result of these things, whether it's knee replacements, whether it's hip replacements, whether it's shoulders, elbows, whether it's um, adrenal fatigue, problems like that, um, you know, and even anxiety. Uh, a lot of these things are correlated to a lot of the behaviors and the things that we see with inside the paradigm of understanding good movement and how it connects to my actual breathing.